If you clicked on this video because you want to hear uh, the serious stuff about Lebanon, you can jump to uh, this timestamp the draft is going to put up. And that's it. Thank you so much because we're going to talk about our personal lives for a little bit. Thanks. Bye. You know, moms want to see their pe their daughters give birth. No, I don't actually. Is that a thing? Uh, yeah, I'm like I don't know if I want my mom to see my. Well, at that point, it's not even your anymore. It becomes this crazy thing. It's not even a at that point. I don't know if I want her to see me. Dude, are we are we recording? Yeah. I was watching an anime the other day, and. This one girl was pregnant, and then, like, this other character just, like, has, like, these powers or whatever, and we're just like that, and the baby came out. Like, it was just, like, out of her stomach. And I was like, damn, dude. How <laughs> far how how far into the future do we need to be in order to get that kind of stuff? No, but then it's also, like, with a C-section, then you're going to get this huge... <laughs> huge C-sections are brutal, Yeah, dude. you're going to get that huge scar. I, I don't... Right. Like, I don't know. I don't know, dude. I don't know how... Why are we people, getting a 10-minute countdown? We get a countdown so that it doesn't... It's also 10 hours. It, it's so that we don't... <laughs> So that the computer doesn't <laughs> go in sleep mode. They'll go in sleep mode. <laughs> Wallahi. Wallahi. Welcome in, her babies. To another episode of the A Rabs podcast. Welcome. This week we are talking about more war. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah. More war. We're also going to deep dive into some other things that have been going we're gonna on. We're going to talk about internet. KSI. We'll talk about Tommy in it as well. We're yeah. gonna talk about uh, we're gonna talk about what's going on with Lebanon because again, all three of us Lebanese, you know, Jewish, Muslim. I hate Christian. Lebanese people. Yeah, me too. Uh, our families Bars are currently <laughs> displaced. Frogan's family is displaced. My, my cousins, family, I think, is fine. Your family's fine. My cousins are displaced. Um, they thought they weren't gonna get displaced because they were so powerful. We have house before we get into the details because I feel like that's serious. Yeah, we will get into it. We got we have housekeeping to do. Oh, let's do. We some do have some housekeeping. To what's do? the housekeeping? I. I, you guys can hear it. I've been sick for the past week. I don't know what it was. I think I had the flu. To be honest, we all went out a week ago and everybody in that group got sick. Yes. So I think they got sick from the bar that they went to. I didn't go to that party, but I did hang out with you guys afterwards mm -hmm. and it was a good time, but God, what a fucking mistake. <laughs> I stayed home. You stayed home and you're fine. Honestly, me going was such a spontaneous thing. Yeah, when I got the call that you were there, I was like, oh, good. She went. I was so happy. And for then you. you got FOMO. I got a little bit of FOMO. Well, I got FOMO because you, you, you three were together and you were screaming at me. I did get a little FOMO. Yeah. I don't know what I was trying to explain. Nobody there. calls me. You were asleep. Believe you were me, definitely asleep. Trust me, you were asleep. Was it, that my Aunt Frank house? No, no. I oh, was wait. at my cousin's uh I was at my cousin's engagement that night, actually. Oh yeah, I oh, don't know. That's right. That's right. I wanted to watch mom talk. You said no, so I said, fuck it. I have no content. I'm yeah, going, I didn't I'm going watch out. That day. So I went out. Was that that was the day that we played the video game, right? Dale yeah. And, yeah. There was no way I was getting to LA, dude. Wait, I, was that Dale and Dawson Day? Yes. No, no, no. No, that wasn't Dale and the Dawson. The day before. Day. That was the day before. I was I did Anne Frank house that day. It was whenever you helped him set up VR. Yeah, yeah, that nightmare of an experience. I forgot what happened, but I know that I had something going on on Friday. But anyways, that was fun, man. I missed it. Yeah, it was a good time. Well, he's been so, sick. Yeah, so for a week I've missed everything. I've been in bed. We've been for the streets, and they're gonna tell me. The oh, experience. that was the day I went to hang out with my dad because my dad was having a freak mm. out. Right. Uh, I forgot. Sag, see, Lebanon is sad. Very sad. Uh, what happened when I was gone? Because you guys hung out together <laughs> alone, and that's always a dangerous experience. It was fun. We had a good time. Me and Frogan had fun. We redid my stream room. Yeah, Monday we went to, we just chilled and we went to downtown Disney. Did you? That's exciting. Yeah. yeah. Sat there. It's BDS, so we're going to get yelled at. Oh, bleep it then. Yeah. I thought you were going to say BDSM. I was like, what? It's BDSM. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, we didn't do anything. We didn't, we, we don't have to believe it. We just went to walk around. Yeah. And we then. We just have to pay for parking, so. And then. No, we didn't. We. we <laughs> Oh, we went oh, for the we went for yeah. the we went for the Lego store. That was the purpose. Yeah, of the oh yeah, we went to Disney oh, for the Lego store. BDS? No, so we went there because I needed to go to the Lego store, and it's the only one that has this the, like a big selection. So we go yeah. there, and we walked up, and there was no fucking Legos. They closed the store. Mean? They're redoing they're the redoing models. It. They're redoing the Lego mm -hmm. store. Yeah, what are they making it into? They're just doing the redoing the sets outside. So oh. we went there. So then after I was like, "Fuck, we're already well, that's here." Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. If they're working on the outside, why can't you go inside? It was 
it was stupid. So we basically were like, oh, cool. We're already here. I was like, I want to get a drink. So we got a drink. Yeah. And then I was like, because we already drove. We drove to like two Lego stores because we were looking. Yeah. I was looking for Legos. Went to Target. Then we went to the downtown Disney. Just sat and chilled. That's pretty cool. Then to use. Bleep it. Then uh, no, you don't have to bleep it. It's All fine. Right, don't I mean, it's it. not. It's we're not going to Disneyland. We literally were just going to downtown Disney to go to a store that they only have at downtown Disney. Fair. Sorry, I'm. I, sorry, I'm. I'm 100 genocided on both sides. You could chill, like you know, when <laughs> fucking people okay. are like, hey, hey, you know, you that's know, true. <clears throat> fuck you. Okay. So, anyways, next one. Tuesday, what did we do, buddy? Tuesday, we went to. Um, we have to recount day by day. We went, just, not, just yeah, somebody, we, just some of the things that happened. We went to Din Tai Fung. <laughs> yeah, dude. Finally, we went to the mall. Wait, the, which one? The one the, the Costa mall. Mesa. Oh, the one in the mall. Yeah. yeah. And then they went shopping. Got some clothes. Would you guys? Would you guys where'd you guys go shopping? In the Uniqlo. Uniqlo. Did Uniqlo. Did you also go shopping with them? They have a bunch of one piece shirts on sale for nine ninety nine at oh. Uniqlo. Dude, it was nice. I Can I be clothes. honest with you? I can't. I can't get more shirts. I have so much clothes. You you do. You have. You guys. I have too have many clothes. clothes. I haven't bought. I don't have a lot. Of, I don't have a lot of clothes. You have a lot more clothes than I do. I have a lot more clothes, but most of them don't fit me. Okay. Yeah, and I have a lot of clothes that don't fit me. Also. No, because I haven't bought like actual like pieces. In a long time. So we all we all went. You guys to, went to Uniqlo. We went to that place, and then after, wait, what'd you get at Uniqlo? He got a he got a I bunch got, of shit. I got four hundred dollars worth of clothes. Is got, that? Yes. Are those jeans from Uniqlo? Yeah. Those are good jeans. Yeah, dude. These I are good jeans for you. Haven't I? Don't have any clothes to wear anytime we go out. It's yeah. like really annoying. We fitted him up. Also, I lost. 15, look I lost fifteen pounds. So yeah. I lost fifteen pounds. Mm. So all my clothes don't fit. They're like uh, That's the ones. Exciting. Like I'm right in between being like to my old clothes and to like my fat clothes you know i'm like my skinny clothes and fat clothes i'm in the middle okay so basically uh so we ended up going there and then we went to this we went to go to somewhere to get a drink or something like that and we ended up going to this a claw machine store claw machine store is like a korean arcade claw machine store <coughs> and i like was, that's exciting and i was there and scootish spent a hundred dollars to play claw games scootish bought us the tickets I you guys spent hundred dollars to play claw games, claw machine games. I won my first try. What'd you get? A kitten, a won, ki like a live one. I'll That's show so you. So Korean, dude. I won Kirby. You got a live kitten I from a claw wish. machine. Oh my god, dude. So, anyways, while I'm there, you got a Kirby. Gonna, she's gonna pull this up. I got Kirby. Scooter's got nothing. I was. <laughs> and he spent hundred dollars. He spent hundred dollars. Scooty, Scooty won me a capybara. So, Scoot won you a capybara. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. So, uh, like a live one? I'm so confused. Are they like stuffed animals or are they live? Looks like this. That's but too all, realistic. But they're, but they're so all, cute. I, I walked I, in. But they're all stuffed animals <laughs> from scary. like from like ones that they're like stuffed plushies, but like good shit, like Pokemon, Zelda. Oh, cool! Like it's different, like big brands. And they had a One Piece claw machine, just One Piece. Like, yeah, it's only the like, big things. But while I was there, we were like, we were at this like pop market store. Uh, I brought the thing. Scoot, can you throw me the Peppa Pig or the pig thing over there so I could show these guys? The We're at this pig. the Pop Mart, and like this was like sixteen bucks to buy to buy this Good little catch. thing. It's just it's ham from uh, Toy Story. Toy Story because I bought like two of these vinyl ones. Wait, why? Why'd you buy them? I was I was in a spending mood. I've been depressed. Okay, I don't know the whole thing happening, but I, I'll bleep that so it doesn't get monetized. I, uh, basically, I was depressed, so I bought this. And then I and I bought a Mandalorian one, and then that was like twenty bucks for each of them. Uh -huh. so I was like, "Fuck it, I just want to buy these like little figures." I wanted I wanted the alien, but it, it, you can't pick which one you get. It's random. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah. So then we went to the other place, and they had massive figurines like the, this at the big. Cl the claw store. Yeah. At the claw store. They were twenty dollars, twenty four dollars for like a big Deadpool, a big Venom, a big of, uh, of those Beetlejuice. Little... They look like this, but they're they're, they're hollow. Soft. Oh, they're hollow. So like they're piggy That's banks. That's pretty cool. So I bought three of the piggy banks and then I was like, I want to do my set. And then I like told Frogan like the next day, I was like, yo, will you help me with my set? And she's like, I just want to go home like after we're done working. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I was like, can you just swing by my house and like look at it? Like, yeah. So we went to Ikea. We bought a bunch of shelves and mm -hmm. then me and Frogan was like, I'll swing by your house. And then once we were there, we started like kind of because originally I told him I was like the day before I was like, send me a video of your stream background like you in the video and you not. in it so I could see how it is because I kind of forgot how it looked. 
He didn't right. do that. So I was like, okay, I'll just go well, why over. Would he? Why would he, you know? Yeah. Well, so then we worked on, uh, we ended up going live and we did like a battle between me and Frogan for like donos and shit. It was so fun, man. And then we built my set while we were live. And essentially- I, I saw the dance. I, uh, yeah, the dance. So we ended up- We'll post that right here. Uh, I'll put the picture up right here, but I'm gonna show Raph. Just someone's calling, so I don't want to show it to the cam. Uh, it looks like that right Oh, that's now. pretty cool. You like my design? Other, yeah, I like it a lot. And then on the other Did side- Did you move the palace? The pal yeah, okay. The Palestine one was in my regular house. So <laughs> Good, was, finally. You got some depth back there. So it looks way it cooler. Looks his, his stream room before was really fun because it just had a bunch of shit back there. And you're like, I don't know what he's going to pull out. He doesn't do that kind of content anymore. So this is better for him. It looks really nice. And he has two floodlights on. Yeah. Um, Like green and blue, I want to say. Yeah. So it, it looks really, really good on Should camera. Should I go back to do that content? I mean, I miss it, but no, because it's not doing anything for you right now. No, it's not about doing stuff for me. It's just like, it'd be It's fun. a lot of work. It's pull a lot. Out, it was too much work for you. Pull out so much shit. Yeah, dude. No, but yeah, it looks really good. It's good. It took like five hours. Because he also had to go back to the claw. Because originally he only got three of them. <laughs> went back to the claw. Machine. Oh, I went home. Oh, so this is the story. <laughs> this is the story. So I go yeah. back. So sorry. The reason why we told this whole story is so I could tell the funny part. I go back to the claw place while we're live. I run there and I was supposed to stream it. But like I was talking to Barry on the phone because we're planning the the Lebanese like a fundraiser thing. Oh, nice. And uh, Barry's helping with that. Shout out Barry Bebop. And basically, uh, essentially, I'm on the phone with, with Barry. And then I'm like, let me let me go. I got to talk to this guy real quick and I'll come back. And it's the same dude who worked there the day before that helped me. And he was like, yo, bro, what's up? I'm like, what's up? He's like, you're back for more. And he, like he recognized me. I was like, yeah, man. He's like, hey, man, I'm not. it's going to sound super weird, but I've been thinking about you. <laughs> and well he's like, right it's, it's, it does sound super yeah, and weird I was like what he's like yeah man I just thought about you like the streaming and the background with these little things is pretty sick and I was like <laughs> okay dude it was cool he was like super nice and I was like alright <coughs> to be honest like, if I was thinking about somebody I would not tell them yeah I would not tell it them was, he was he prefaced it but then I bought three he was like and he like helped me get them and then I found out like which website sells them because I want a Stormtrooper one really bad. They don't have them there. What kind of Stormtrooper? Just a white Stormtrooper. Yeah. I, I love the aesthetic of the Stormtrooper. I think it's cool. Yeah. It's like my favorite Stormtrooper. You like character. white like supremacy? White. I like the white supremacy. Mm -hmm. White supremacy, Nazism. Yeah. Well, I can hide in one of those suits and they will never know. No, they know. Because are, aren't they the bad guys? <laughs> Yes, yes, they are the bad guys. No, nope. are they the bad guys? Excuse <laughs> me, remember when the stormtrooper hate crime me at Disneyland? Yeah, the stormtrooper traveler. That was pretty racist. Traveler is another word for muscle. Dude, yeah. he was. They, they like literally got sassy with it. I'll never forget that day. <laughs> so, speaking of that dude, so I was like, hey, and I I, I chatted him up, and he uh, well pause. Huh? You chatted him up? Yeah, dude, I got his number, and it turns out we're gonna go on a date. He's very nice. No, I'm okay. kidding. I told him, I was like, we're going to come back. We're going to film a stream here. And he was hyped on it. So he's nice. Nice guy. Okay. He probably Maybe he's watching the pod. What's up, dude? What's up, dude from Claw Store? You know? It was fun. I like the fact that I won three things. Well, two things and Scoot won you something. Fine. I won two kittens and a Scootish won me the other day. Like capybara? Thing. Yeah, but I felt victorious. I'm like, I need Great you to show. not do that. You need me to not do what? That's why I brought the pig so I can fiddle with this. Because it's really sensitive. First try when the cat, I was like, I'm fucking victorious at this shit. Nice, dude. It's exciting. Where was this claw shop? Um, oh, we shout them Mesa. Out? No, it was in the city. Oh, of, no. I think it was, uh, we should not shout them yeah, out. Yeah, no. Well, it's our claw we'll shop. Take, yeah. Oh, okay. It's, all, it's our claw yeah, shop. Yeah, we're not letting anybody else go there. We're gatekeeping it. This no, is the one. We, we, you want to go after this? No, I can't. We're, I think we're going to get soup. We're going to get ramen. We're okay. get soup. Or There's a ramen claw. place right next to the claw shop, and it's both close to here, and we can get another one of the oh, figures. Dude, do we do we Do, do we do it? <laughs> so it's the, I'm having a little bit of claw foma. Yeah, dude. there's a But ramen. the thing is, like, I'm too, I feel too, I feel, I feel like, too weak to get no, angry, and I will get angry. Your delusion is going to make you win. It's uh, Japanese, so the claws are pay, programmed to pay out more. Oh, but you didn't I thought it was anything. Korean. Yeah, I wasn't trying to win anything. I was trying. <laughs> No, he was yeah. That's the most that's biggest bullshit. bullshit. Well, you were throwing the claw Dude, machine on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't trying to win anything. Oh, that's true. He go in the copy bar. Yeah, my bad. I apologize. I'm sorry. I won two kittens. One was holding a little shrimp. 
One had the hat hat on. You don't even like shrimp. It was shrimp tempura. Oh, was it really? Well, we're good then. So maybe that's we'll exciting. Maybe we'll yeah. go to the claw place. Exciting. And then the other- should be sick more often. I like that. I like it when you guys spend like quality bonding time. Honestly, together. me and Frogan have never hung out by ourselves, and we hung out a lot this this week. And I feel like now we're best friends. Breast friends. Breast friends. <laughs> Here's the thing: the reason breast. why Capri and I never hung out is because he's like, if Frogan and I hang out with each other, it's going to be weird. Yeah, because every time we hang it out, was weird. It we went to a weird. Japanese claw shop and he got hit on by some guy. I didn't get no, hit on. But, just like, it but was the, weird. the start of our hangouts alone started whenever what? we went to Mortez's. Yeah. Speech. Oh yeah, we got to meet Motez. So we got to meet Motez. And so that day was a a whirlwind for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I planned the interview with Hassan. Yeah. I got. 45 minute notice and I had to s- speed to Hassan's house but I had to go to the grocery market before because he wanted like fruit, nuts and orange juice. Motez did? <laughs> yeah. And but that like, was his rider. Yeah. He's like, get me fruit and nuts. I've never had fruit I've never had nuts. <laughs> no, but then I was like, what the fuck fruit? So I called Capri I'm like, what fruit do I get? They didn't specify. He's like, Arabs fucking love melon. You know what he's- They love melon. <laughs> they love melon. Dude, I love melon. Bro, the funniest thing. Bro, my you favorite memory is, so dude, dude, we love like, melon. I want to say it's so no, bad. No, like any kind of melon. I want to like say it's so bad what he did. Cantaloupe. I was dying on stream, dude. He literally, I'm saying it. He's on stream. Just wait, with- okay, wait until I get to that point. So then I sped to Hassan's house. He's like, yeah. just come in. And I, I came into his house and he was still streaming. And I went into his kitchen and I opened every single cabinet I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing right now. Cause, and I'm like, trying to plate this shit. Yeah. And His then, mom wasn't home. You couldn't ask her? No. Uh. So then I found a plate and I plated the melon and I plated the nuts and I sent it to Capri. I was like, this look okay. He's like, it looks like a cracker plated it. And I'm like, how else am I supposed to fucking plate this stupid Tower. ass melon? Um, but then they texted me that they're going to be a little late. And I was like, okay. Because I was like mentally freaking what out. What kind of melon did you get? I got all kinds of melon. Dude, I, nice. I took a picture okay, of it. We now, like we, can I tell, is, we like melon. Can I tell you the story? That's actually a true thing. Can I tell you it is very true. You, you, yeah. can, you can, can tell. I tell you the funniest part? Dude, um, I, and I turn on I turn on the stream to watch it and I'm like super hyped. I'm like, this is a cool moment. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You got a can of little punny do Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I turn the, on the stream the, the and he's three. got a fork and he's eating and he pulls out the yellow melon and he eats it. I was like, he, yeah. Arabs like melon. You know, <laughs> you know, so, so the interview was supposed to last twenty minutes. It lasted an hour. Good. Um, the, he he fucked with Hassan. Um, and I was just standing there watching. And then um, <laughs> after after the interview was over, uh, he fucked the melon up, dude. Yeah, dude. He ate, he ate the rest I of think, it. I think it the thing smart. is, like, he doesn't have a rider. They were just like asking him, like, do you want something? And he was like, because Hassan was, like, was very adamant about feeding him. He's like, y- can you please ask them if I could feed him? He wanted yeah, to let g- me feed this guy who didn't have food, really. He wanted well, to give him <clears throat> Turkish food Jesus. so bad. And he's like, I'm not that hungry right now. I just want something small. Oh. I was going to say, because like, apparently, like every Arab has that in their fridge, but Hassan's yeah. Turkish, so he doesn't have like Has- the nuts. Hassan's and the- fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, looks it's like, just Huel, isn't it? It, it looks like my, it looks like my fridge if I had groceries. Like it's all protein shakes. <laughs> it's all protein yeah, shakes. Dude, I bet. Um, I was watching Hassan do something yesterday, and it pissed me off because like you're not doing that right. But I forgot what it was. Please continue. Was it a workout thing? It was a workout thing. I was like, this is, you're not doing that right. Oh, yeah, he was doing the. He was doing he was doing the hamstring workout on the on the bench thing where he's like that and suspending himself. Yeah. And I was like, buddy, you gotta keep your body straight. He's like bending forward. I'm like, you're not doing this shit right. <laughs> Anyways. But yeah. Anyways, I'm sorry. So I I was kind of devious during the Motez interview. He wanted orange juice. And I opened his son's cup cabinet. And I'm like, there are options here. Joe Rogan, United Nations. I went for the Keck W cup and it says anti molding juice. <laughs> Not bad. No bad. <laughs> no bad. He drank out of that cup. City? Yes. Dude. It's really funny. So, but no, you couldn't see it because he was holding it. It was a like, cupping it. Oh, but, and okay. I, started, I started like laughing to myself because I was like, if chat sees this, it's game over. It's an <laughs> anti molding juice that had a Keck W emote. <laughs> <laughs> or there was like world sexiest Turkish man, Joe Rogan podcast, uh, United Nations, or the Keck W. The Joe Rogan one would have been funny too. Yeah, I thought about it, but I'm like, I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, you, you would get in trouble. 
I was like, I don't want to fuck and then it you up. Guys, so after that, you guys went to go see Motez's live event? Yeah. So originally we were supposed to do the interview there, but I pulled a few strings and we ended up doing it at his house, thankfully. I saw my bitch Kaya. She wasn't there for like the first half. She was at the groomer. And then she came home and she just sat with me. Nice. Um, And then the funny thing is, before we move on from it, Hassan was showing him how like Kaya will like, she like tapped his chest and she like stood up. He's like, I don't want her to do that to me. <laughs> and I don't know why I thought it was so funny, but he's really fucking tall. He's a big guy. He's huge. He's a big boy. Like whenever I would he, say he's six five, six six. He has to be six. He's taller than Hassan. But whenever he walked in, I was like, oh my God. I was like, because I'm I'm not, I don't want to consider myself short, but I'm like average height for a girl. But I was like, this motherfucker's huge. He made me look short. Scoot, can you uh deal with the mile? <laughs> and then we went to the talk. Miles is whining. Talk to her. Can you like? Can you like go make him not whine? Why don't you break his legs? Yeah. <laughs> go so break then his legs. We went to the we went to the speech day because we were guest listed, and I was like, okay, I want Cap to meet him too. Mm -hmm. Um, the speech was really good though. It focused a lot on his photography, and he's actually a really good photographer. Um, but then after, bro, I was sat next to fucking Alana Hadid. I was shook. Jealous. I was I was shook, was cool. and then after I talked to her, she's like, "Oh yeah, I know you." I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, that was gonna be very nice. Um, and our next guest is gonna be Alana Hadid. Dude, well, she's a big advocate for Palestine. She is. Yeah. Like that's what was cool about it to see like a celebrity sitting there and being like, "Yo, dude, we're like here to advocate for Palestine." I got a shout out during it. You did? Yeah. I don't know why. What, did you donate? No, they're like Frogan from Hasanabi is here, and I'm like, yeah, Frogan from Hasanabi. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> but like, after, like Hassan is his own organization <laughs> Rogan from the Hasanabi org but we got a picture with him after and Capri looks so awkward in it it was the, awkward did you guys plan the cutout photo or the cropping or is that the actual photo that's the actual picture oh, when Bro. you posted it you cropped her out yeah that's funny but in my head I'm like I can literally crop this motherfucker out perfectly I, we both cropped each other out. Yeah, why are you giving so much space, dude? He got shot. He was like, I don't want to sit next to him. It wasn't that, dude. It was like a weird, like at first people were getting some like adequate time to like go and say what's up and talk to him. And then when they, when we got in, we were like the first group. They're like, you got to go fast. And then they probably like, like made it reasonable after that. But it was like, go, go, go. And she already met him. Yeah, I already so met him. So he was him. like, oh, what's up? Nice to see you again. And then I was like, okay, I want to say what's up. But then they were like, take your picture and leave. And I was like, that's not what I, I thought this was like a meet and greet. I didn't know. If yeah. Was, like, I mean it's typically for donors but we got it for free well, but yeah i'm like capri's capri's shy next to him yeah dude i feel you awkward. look like a you look short next so to him. in my head i'm like big, so in, in my I'm head i'm like too. i was He's like big dude. am i standing too close to him or is capri standing too far He's standing too far away he also is just like such a fob you know like dude. he's such a fucking fob dude like i just don't like i don't know how to like be like he's like how old are you i'm like he's like my cousin i'm about to be like dude la is gonna pop he's like really no, he, the last movie he watched was Matilda. The last movie? Yeah. He's like, I just watched the movie Matilda. I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm but like bro, Eric. Er, so, someone, I told my chat that. Someone in my chat was like, dude, that's an old movie. I was like, no, the Arabs just got the 90s. Yeah, we just got, <laughs> no, just no, got guys, the 90s. No, just got the 90s. No, somebody from uh, Unra showed him it. Uh, but the funny thing is Hassan was like asking him if he played basketball because he's so fucking tall. He's like, no, like in Gaza, they don't have shoes my size. Because he, he's a size 15. Yeah. And Hassan's like, oh, damn, what the fuck? I wouldn't give you a pair of my shoes. But he doesn't wear a size 15. Uh, bro, we. Why would he want a pair of his Hassan's old like, shoes? Uh, Hassan has like multiple pairs of the Kai Irving. Shoes? Yeah, he oh, likes the Kai Irving because he got canceled. Yeah. And cheap. He said that one time. He has like multiple pairs. Kyrie of Honestly, yeah, he did get canceled. He said he hated Jews. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I actually had to throw away my Kyrie Irving jersey because of it. It was pretty, it was, that's crazy. I, got it, I literally, I bought the, I bought the Jersey. It got it really cheap. $5. Why did he say he hated Jews? Cause he was going, it was like when Kanye came mm. out, it was like, I had, the Jews are doing this. And then Kyrie said some like weird, uh, anti-Semitic shit. So I don't know, weirdo. I didn't know that. Yeah. But yeah, then after that, and that's why nobody talks about Kyrie. <laughs> he said they're good shoes. But after that, Capri held me hostage and made me go buy his autism toys at Target with him. Oh Yeah. Remember that I was there for that, and that was the start of our hangouts, mash em ups. Yeah, uh, and now he said he never wants to hang out with me ever again. So, thank God. Okay, so 
Not bad. No, That's we had a great so time. That's so rude. We had a great time. We had a great time. I'm, I'm fucking around. That's we, so we actually, rude. We're, we're actually brothers now. And we, dude, we killed it the other day. We had a great stream too. Yeah, we made $300 and I saw each. a couple clips. I was like, That's wow, great. this is It was a fun time. for them. <laughs> I thought of you the other day. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Oh, was, what was the thought? Schultz had I saw dude, I wanted it. to say something to you guys. I was, I'm going to drop it. I didn't watch it yet, though. I didn't watch it. I'm too afraid to watch it. I don't watch I saw the clip on Twitter. I'm like, is this AI? I thought no, it was dude. AI. I, it looked so like the clips on Twitter look so fucking fake. He's had him on before. He's had him on before a long time ago, but this is. I'm too afraid to watch it. All right. You guys ready to talk about Lebanon? Yeah, let's talk about Lebanon. Uh, so Lebanon is uh, is getting. Uh, uh, bleep that or the word because it's probably going to get demonetized. Yeah. Um, and uh, Frogan and my family's Raf's family is not displaced yet because you're really far away. I have, I have to be honest. I don't really know. I haven't really talked to my dad about it yet. OK, so it's been a while. Two weeks. Frogan's families are really, really displaced. Yeah. yeah so my family is from South Lebanon. My village was already bombed. Yeah. One of my uncle's houses was already bombed, but nobody was in it, thankfully. Thank God. Um, they moved to the Christian areas. Good. Um, whoa, whoa, brother. Stay out of my... You know, I mean, like, people... Like, Lebanon is very segregated by religion, mm. but everyone is, like, coming together um, nice. and, like, supporting one another. Uh, and Netanyahu doesn't want that, yeah, by the way. So, they're, they're displaced you're, currently. You're, um... They don't. My dad said that they're like every day they're running somewhere different because they're just like trying to fight for their lives at this point, which is very scary. Um, One of my uncles was trying to get a flight out of Lebanon to go to Turkey, then Turkey to Canada. But they started bombing next to the Beirut airport. So all flights were suspended. So he's stuck in Lebanon. The Uh, last I heard. So uh, there's that. Uh, My family was in the Christian area, which is supposed to be the safe area. Uh, in Beirut, and they were getting bombed so hard that they eventually just said, "Like we got to get the fuck out of here." So now they moved to a safer, like <laughs> they moved to like basically the suburbs from the city, and you know they're in a safe place. They're actually in our home, like my family home, um, and they're staying there right now. Um, my other friend, I texted him. He's also in a Christian area, so it's supposed to be safe. Again, the reason why we're saying Christian or Muslim is the very sectarian in Lebanon. They're very segregated. It's desegregated throughout the years, but it's still kind of segregated. Like the, there's yeah. area. Well, there's air, there's definitely areas where you're like that's that's Muslim territory. the The deal is about it is that like people the the way that they think about segregation is it's almost like a city block. Like this city block is Muslim, then this city block is Christian, then this city block is Muslim, then this is Christian. This is Muslim. This is Christian. It goes like this. So like. It's really hard for you to be like, oh, we're in a safe area when literally it's like, think about like a, a suburb city block over. Uh, it's like you can see the building that's Muslim from your house and it, they're bombing that building. So it's not safe. You know, like, okay, so that's number one. Number two, my dad's land got bombed. They got hit. They bombed my church uh, in the south because I'm, I'm technically from the south, but we moved to the village. So we still have a house in the south and we moved to uh, northern Lebanon. And they bombed our church. They bombed. And the only way that I saw a video of it was on Telegram. Someone sent me a video of my uh, town and I could see my grandfather's grave because uh, if you are the religion that I am, Maronites, they're buried above ground. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have to be in a mausoleum. You're not allowed to be buried underground. So Muslims, you're not allowed to yet to be buried naked. Yeah. Yeah. You're buried in the sheet. Yeah. (laughs) So nice. So you're not allowed to be actually buried as a Christian uh, Maronite. You're supposed to be buried in a, you're supposed to be put in a mausoleum. Mm. So I could see the mausoleum and I could see the rocket attack and I could see the aftermath. And that's when my dad, who was always saying like, Israel's not going to hit us. We're safe. Was like, oh shit, you're right. They are going to hit us. They are going to target us. So essentially it's not good. Um, I texted my best friend lives there. Um, you guys know him or you didn't meet him, but you met him. He texted me and he said uh, that it's like a living hell. He's living in hell. Um, He said that like, I mean, if he's saying that he's very, you got to remember Lebanese people do not think that anything bad is happening ever. Mm -hmm. So if he's like, I'm living in hell, that means that he's freaked out and it means that uh, something, something it's bad. Yeah. I mean, we talked to Anthony about this, but it's like Lebanese people are expected to have this like resilience because the 2006 war, like they, 
they beat the fuck out of Israel. I'm not gonna lie. They kicked Israel's ass. Has and it's just like that. this like little baby puny countries kicking ass. But it's like we sh- Lebanese people shouldn't have to be fighting for their fucking lives, you know? Whenever it's like yeah. it's not just Israel at this point. It's the US funding yeah. it. It's crazy. It's it's just like it's the US. I mean, the, it literally the, is. The, the, speaking of the US funding it, uh, this clip went viral. Um, we're going to talk about a couple different things, but the biggest thing is this clip went viral and I want to talk Are about Are you sure this. you want to show that though? I thought that guy's a Nazi. He is a Nazi. I just want to make it aware because nobody tends to know about this guy. So I do want to make this. Okay. Number one, the guy is, the guy is uh, a Nazi, but he kind of confronted them. He was based in the clip. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'm saying you could be based in the clip, but when you click on his damn fucking Twitter, you can see it right now. He's literally first thing is uh, retweeting Elon Musk. We're going to be on different planets to survive. I mean, he's an idiot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you want to let's wait for Raf? No, we'll we're, we'll get it going here. Let me just show you the clip because then we can play the clip and Raf's Raf can listen to it and then uh, we could all react. Israel is still poised to strike Iran. And in July, Blinken said that Iran was one to two weeks away from developing a nuclear weapon. So I guess for all we know, they might have one by now. And meanwhile, in Ukraine, They've struck deep within Russian territory several times, as deep as 300 miles from the border. And in that case, we don't have to- Without even seeing his thing, the reason why I knew he was a Nazi is because he was talking about Ukraine striking Russia. So I was like, oh, he's a Nazi. He's like, this is like a very right-wing talking point. But let me yes, we know that <clears throat> Russia has the largest nuclear arsenal on the planet, as many as 6,000 warheads. And so one of the risks of arming <laughs> militaries that are striking in the territories of nuclear powers is that- one one of those gets deployed and then it could escalate very quickly from there. So it, it's rarely discussed, but it's important to address that the nuclear risk is real and it could very abruptly mean the end of, you know, what humans have worked for thousands of years to collectively achieve. And uh, us today are very lucky to live in with the fruits of that achievement. And I feel like we're treating the risks kind of brazenly. So my question for you is, you know, we often hear in response to these concerns that, well, Putin, Khomeini, you know, they're war criminals, they're terrorists, uh, as if they're too inherently evil or immoral for us to negotiate with. But meanwhile, this administration has financed a genocide in Gaza for the last year, and every day you're up there denying accountability for it. So, I mean, okay. what gives you the right to lecture other countries on their moral... So, if you have a policy question for me, I'm happy to Bro, take it. Bro, I was like, he fucking ate. Like, he he kind of ate. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, that's what everyone's thinking. I mean, he just said what everyone's thinking. It was just like... But I mean, there's places in Washington where you can give this. a speech. Yeah, but people are, are sick of the bullshit in here. I mean, like, it is okay. a genocide. I'm gonna you go are to, abetting I'm gonna go it, question. and you go are ahead. risking nuclear... He's never going to be welcome back, but he's made himself a career out of that. I mean, that's really what it is. But yeah, no, he... I mean, he's... You know, don't don't think that this is a good person. All of a sudden, you should listen to the rest of his things because essentially, I went to his page and I was just like all Elon Musk, like, we're going to be on the moon. It's like, okay, get the fuck out of here with that shit. But at the end of the day, nobody's, this is how all reporters should be talking to the White House. Yeah. I mean, the I they're not on the State Department. Sorry. I think there was like a BBC whistleblower recently. I don't know if you saw that where they said that their whole, like they had to maintain the image of Israel in their reporting. There was an entire Al Jazeera interview that said that BBC and CNN are implicitly biased towards Israel and people in there, multiple whistleblowers from both organizations came out and said it's biased towards Israel and they try to make Israel look good in all of their reporting. This is off topic. I got invited to an Al Jazeera event tomorrow and I'm very confused. You should go. You should I'm, absolutely I'm going, go. but I'm very confused as to What's why. What's the event? A town hall for yeah, you policy. Should, you should absolutely <laughs> I, go. I okay. don't know what it is, but I'm going to go. I mean, the deal is like right now, what's really blowing my mind is like they're using the same playbook in Lebanon and they're doing the same thing over and over with Hezbollah and or Hezeb Allah, by the way. It's also, Hezbollah. Hezeb just means, no, it, it's Hezbollah. No, it's Hezeb is party. No, it's and not. Party is Hezbollah because you're connecting it. Okay, you can call it whatever you want, but it's Hezeb Allah. We call it Hezeb Kitab when you do the Kitab. It's Hezbollah. No, it's Hezeb. The word is Hezeb. It's Hezbollah. Whenever you're saying it, like it, you don't say Abdullah for the name Abdullah. You know, because, Yalla is Yalla. Did you know that? Because you're fucking reading it in a way where you're not pronouncing it correctly. When you read Arabic, that's how you read it. Hezbollah. Okay, so whenever Hezbollah. you spell it in Arabic, but you can call it Hezeb Allah as well. Nobody calls it that though. It's yeah, Hezbollah. But yeah, but we call Kitayib party. We'll call it Hezeb Kitayib. 
Yeah, because you're doing Hizb Kateyeb. But whenever you spell Hezbollah in Arabic. You're making it one word. Because you're connecting it. Because it's Hizb. And then Allah. Ha Zaba. Mm -hmm. Alif La. Mm -hmm. Which whenever you connect it like that. You say Hezbollah. You're telling someone who can't read or write it. I mean, I can read it right fluently. I can speak it. I can also read it. <laughs> <laughs> you did Duolingo for I two can. weeks. <laughs> no, he can't. He can read it. He can, can read. He read can it. read doob. I can read doob and boob. Can you? <laughs> can you explain real quick deviation? What are the three, four? Like, what is the numbers for? Because someone asked me in um, chat today. So basically, whenever you're like writing Arabic words in English, uh, some letters represent. Or some numbers represent Arab letters. So like the A would be three because in Arabic, the letter looks like a three. Um, the Ha is a number seven. Okay. Because it looks like it in Arabic. Because they don't um, have they don't have those letters in English. Yeah. For the rest of them they don't have there. those letters in English because you don't have like the hard like Ha or like the A. Um, and to be quite honest, if you didn't really learn the A and when you're younger, you're not going to be able to say it. There's this thing about language with babies and babies are uh, uh, able. It's, it, you're basically like gagging when you say it. Yeah. 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 Uh, babies are yeah. able to speak the entire spectrum. And then as they learn the language of their parents, they like lose the ability to talk the rest because they're like really malleable at a, as birth. That's why, why kids are like, it's hard for you to switch languages because you like literally are closed off to those like sounds out of your mouth. Uh, this Netanyahu speech to the message of the people of Lebanon, it's, it's kind of oh, long. Yeah, I was going to bring that up about how he said that the people of Lebanon are about to receive the same treatment of the people of Gaza. It's really bad. The reason why I want to also bring this up is that people don't really understand how the Lebanese civil war has happened and what he's doing. I was, and I said this multiple times, he's purposefully signaling to the right wing Christian parties in Lebanon to basically go against Hezbollah or Hezbollah. Yeah, he's trying to do infighting. He's trying to do infighting. He's trying to do another trying Lebanese to do another civil, civil war. war yeah. yeah. So I watched it and I was like losing my mind and nobody's talking about it because people don't understand Lebanon probably the way we do. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, at all. I don't know. I was saying this. I was like, there's no content creator that really understands Lebanon or anyone who's a political commentator. Nobody understands Lebanon, dude. It's not even Lebanese people. No, not even like even we had Anthony on. He's like, bro, I don't fucking get it. You know, like, but at the end of the day, like there there's these groups are not just one thing, right? Mm -hmm. There's like Hamas in Gaza. There's the military wing. There's the fucking medical wing. There's the, this wing. They're all different. They're all separated, right? That's like you saying, I hate America's military, but I like America's, I like California. You know, it's like, yeah, they're way fucking different. Like I'm not part of the military of America. Like, right. You know, so in this video, what he's doing is he's trying to get, he's trying to stoke the right wing nationalists, by the way, you don't understand a lot of the Christians in Lebanon are Christian right wing nationalists. They want a country of just Christians. They are racist. Times have changed quite a bit in Lebanon. Most people are kind of like coming to the middle. And right now that all the Shia are like and are running because Shia are, are, are for Hezbollah. They're basically like the Shia are with them. They're now kind of going to the Christian areas and they're, they're being safe because the Christians are taking them in. So this whole infighting is not happening because everyone knows Israel's the problem. Can I tell you a story, but can you bleep it? Yeah, but can we watch this? Then you tell me the story. You want to it's true. It's relevant. I swear. Okay, tell me, tell me, tell me. My cousin gave us his old Xbox, and his username was Hezbollah something. And then we were like, "Roll this motherfucker is about to get us put on a list." That's really funny. Why you, bleep that? Yeah, why bleep that? Was he was he an American or is he from there? He's American. He died. Okay. Then, so, <laughs> yeah. Then we're good. And and what the war or just generally? Remember, I told you my cousin died last year. Yeah then okay oh do you still want to bleep it we don't, we don't have to i don't know if, i don't i don't want to be put on the list well it's okay. not your xbox <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah it's not yeah. my xbox but yeah we just wanted to play mortal kombat Bro, oh, sweetie you're already out on the list okay yeah, believe me, <laughs> do you think i am yes yeah you had the most viral fucking pro hamas tweet of all time like uh, you don't think you're on the list the first thing they saw that the fbi's on the computer they're like oh that bitch is going on the list raf is on a list and he's jewish I don't think I'm on a list. You're on the list. You think I'm on a list? Yes, you're on the list. There's no way I'm on the list. You're on this podcast. You're on the list. There's no way I'm on. We're I'm not, on a list. There's no way we're on the list. I'm. Stop saying we're on a list because we're not going to get sponsored by billionaires. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you. They me, love us. Okay. Let me. They want people on the list. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're let's, just mad that they're not on the list. Exactly. <laughs> Honestly. All right. Here we go. I just realized I'm not wearing. This is a message to the people of Lebanon. 
Do you remember when your country was called the Pearl of the Middle East? Man, I this do. motherfucker from Philly needs to shut the fuck up. Bro, he makes me so mad. Lebanon fucking slaps. Like him going like, do you remember when your country was sick? I'm like, yes, like two a week ago. Yeah, before you fucking started bombing me. Yeah. Hello? He's like, this is a message. You guys remember when you used to go clubbing in your country and do drugs at the nightclubs and have a good time? And I'm like, <laughs> yesterday. yeah, yesterday. <laughs> my cousin was like, I would have bought a thing. Dude, my cousin's during the war right now. They sent me a picture of them on the beach drinking beers. And they're like, they're like, bro, they're bombing the cities, but I think we're safe here. <laughs> they're just I'm like, Lebanese people are so crazy, dude. Okay, let me keep playing. What happened to Lebanon? A gang of tyrants and terrorists destroyed it. That's what happened. Yeah, you bitch. Lebanon was once known for its tolerance, for its beauty. Today, it's a place. Okay, it's so still known for yeah, uh, it. So speaking of its tolerance, I pulled something else up. What the fuck did it up? Tolerance. Yeah. It was so funny. I pulled something else up. Real funny. This is a Lebanese person that is also gay. Puts and shut the fuck up. Holding hands between same sexes is very common in Arab culture. Any sexual activity is illegal unless it's behind yeah, closed doors. Yeah, hold hands right now. And he goes. Hold on. No, he's sick. I don't want to no, get hold sick. Hands. I don't want to get no, sick. I don't, don't, don't want to get sick. I don't want to get, get sick. sick. I'll think hold about it. Hold toes. You're going to. It's gay. And then I said, I lived in Lebanon, <laughs> been to all the gay clubs, kissed the same sex in public in front of the police and never saw a day in jail. This is like people who've lived in Lebanon that are gay. Okay. In Jordan, gay men can be prosecuted for holding hands in Syria. I'm like, bro, have you seen Lebanese people? You can't tell which one's gay or not. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, let me keep playing. I mean, Lebanese people are so like. I feel like Arab culture is inherently pretty gay. It's zesty. Very zesty. You like kiss, zesty. You kiss each other on the cheeks. It's zesty. It's definitely metrosexual. Honestly, anything. the only people I kiss on the cheek at this point, Arab wise. Yeah. My husband. It's me. Place of chaos. Place of war. Israel withdrew from Lebanon 25 years ago. <laughs> Wait, hold on, pause. Conquered Lebanon. Israel didn't withdraw. They lost in the fucking 2006. 25 Dude, years ago. Leave him alone. Don't talk to him. I think he'll, I think he'll stop. Uh, doing that. Oh, he needs to stay home. Okay. Just keep. We're not going to get a mile. I'm going to Israel him. You don't Jesus fuck it, dude. He's, yeah, dude, you need to chill. It's what a puppy. Fuck? He's a puppy. He's a puppy. How long are you going to say he's a puppy for before? How long are puppy's no, puppies? It doesn't matter regardless of how I'm feeling. That's like 15 crazy. years. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like 15 that's years. Even, that's crazy. He's already in a pen. Okay, what do you define as Israeling miles? Well... What, you, what? what time period? Boosting the culture. <laughs> no. Boosting the culture. Yeah. You yeah. literally tried to beat him up the first time he went out there. So don't act all holy right now, Scooty. No, that was just a funny joke. That was just like. Well, you think I'm when so, white people do it, it's not. I don't know. Because it, when I say it, it's not a it's joke. It's cool. It's cute. You know? But he doesn't. Wait, wait, wait. Say, say you're going to fight Miles. I'm going to fight Miles. Oh, that's so cute. What do you, you do it? I'm going to Israel Miles. What the fuck, dude? That's fucked. That's really fucked up. That. I think the hijab adds to it. Also, I wasn't like that. I don't know. <laughs> what have I ever laid my? Listen, you guys are the ones that yell at Miles. I've never yelled at him for real. I yelled at what? I, yeah, yes, you have. You, you go. Him get, or yeah, you go. Get off me, Miles. Okay, I'm that. sorry. I don't feel like getting bit all over the place. Uh, uh, bite him back. You have to bite him back. You got to snow dogs. Snow dogs. <laughs> you never seen the movie Snow Dogs. No. Cuban Gooding Jr. Yeah, yeah. You I'm gotta not gonna, bite I'm him not, back. I'm not biting any motherfucker Cuban back. Cuban Jr. wears me out. Okay. <laughs> 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 right. It freaks me out. Okay. I'm not biting any more. Okay, here we go. It's your Iran. AI said you really Iran like it though. They're talking about men, not Can dogs. I be honest? Someone in the comments, I just want to say something. Someone in the comments on the last video when we talked to Anthony, we were making jokes and they're like, this is a serious topic. Don't make jokes. Suck my dick. Oh no, they said it about me. They're like, I don't like how that girl is not being serious about it. I'm like, what did I even make any jokes during Bro, the last it's episode? One, it's, called the it's misogyny. It's like crazy that people misogyny. don't attack me for the shit yeah. that I say. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I don't remember. Like, I no, don't, bro, I don't you just, did. It's just it haters. Me. You just have you just have Frogan haters. They're, they're not haters. They're fans. They have a Discord. They hang out there and they go, mm, Frogan did this. That's freaks. They're freaks. You got haters. All right, let me play. But we also love you. Think, keep watching our videos. Yeah, keep watching it. You, and keep commenting. You're boosting it. Finances and arms Hezbollah. To serve Iran's interests at Lebanon. Bro, Nanya, this is Hezbollah, right? And you can't even fucking say it right. Hezbollah. A stockpile Hezbollah. of ammunition Hezbollah. and weapons Hezbollah. and a Ford Hezbollah. Iranian military base. Just one day after the October 7th massacre a year ago, Hezbollah joined the war against Israel. It launched an unprovoked attack on our cities, killing Jumping. civilians without distinctions, 
Jews, Christians, Muslims, and Druze. Okay, so they said that they're Druze killing. We talked about last oh, yeah. time. It Druze, was, Druze. Um, there was the village in the Golan Heights. They the has uh, the Hezab rocket came down and hit kids playing soccer. But everyone says Israel shot the rocket down and it hit the kids playing soccer. That was in the Golan Heights. Muslims, it killed one person in Palestine. It hasn't killed any Christian Palestinians that I'm aware of, or any Christian Israelis, and it hasn't. I don't think. Druze. And I think it killed Jews. I think it killed IDF soldiers. So I think Hezeb has not killed anyone else. Israel has decided to put an end to this. We've decided to do whatever is necessary to return our people safely to their homes. By killing people. Israel has a right to defend. Watch, listen to this part. Israel also has a right to win. And Israel will win. Israel has a right to win is fucking insane. That's insane. To win what? Return to where to Lebanon? No, what they're saying is they're trying. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to get rid of. He's bullshitting the people. Okay, he's got a, he's got over a hundred thousand people in northern Israel that will not go back to their settlements in northern Israel. Good, bye. Go back to fucking Brooklyn, bitch. Like you have your fucking house there. Okay, so that's number one. Also, forty percent. I think twenty five percent of Israelis are considering leaving the country right now, which is really not good for them. Those people are displaced and they need to go back to their homes because his economy is in shambles right now because the Israeli economy is re- is reducing by about 2% which or 4%. It's been a reduction when, when America is going up by 3% this year. So they're failing right now. The second thing is uh, Hezeb is launching rockets towards the north. So what he's doing right now is he's saying, oh, we're going to put a buffer zone between Hezeb and Lebanon, so we're going to occupy the South. But that's not true. What he's really trying to do is take over the South and then put settlers there yeah. because they've wanted South Lebanon forever. They want they want greater Israel. They want the whole fucking Middle East. So what's going on is he thinks, oh, I'll put a buffer zone there. This is all bullshit. It's just a land grab. It's all, th- this is his uh, justification. If we get them to no longer launch rockets at us, then we will uh, we'll have put our people safely back in the North. Well, fuck you. Your people don't want to be there because guess what? Today... Iran's rockets touched Tel Aviv. Hezbollah's rockets touched Tel Aviv. So now they're fucked. So now they're like, there is no, we can just move our people in. Second, they're trying to roll into Southern Lebanon. They're getting their fucking ass beat. You know, the hello, my enemy in Israel guy. He keeps making videos going like, we killed you in this town. We fucked you in this town. Bro, I need him to stop telling them his fucking location. Yeah, he keeps telling them the locations. He's also telling them that they have fake towns. So apparently they were rolling into ghost towns and they were blowing them up. So what's crazy Fake is towns is crazy. That's dude. What only, a crazy only, strat. Only Lebanese people would do that. We make a town. Nobody lived there. Do you know, do you know the theory of dog river in Lebanon? Do you know what dog river is? I posted it. Do you know what dog river is? I didn't know about it until you posted it. Post, it's yeah. called not a, uh, not al kalb. So it's, it's probably between my house and your house. Okay. Not al kalb is like a, is a thing. And in the area, it's all military seals going back to antiquity and they have seals from like ancient Egypt, from like like Roman Empire. They have uh, the Greek Empire that they all put their seal there because they invaded and conquered and did battle in Lebanon. And like it's called Dog River for like so many different mythical reasons. Nobody really knows why it's called Dog River, except for they said that like there's like two or three competing. History is kind of muddy, you know, like either there was a bunch of dogs that lived on that river or the dogs used to howl when invaders were coming in. That's the theory. Mm -hmm. But the new thing is that we call it dog river because everyone who tried to invade Lebanon and take it over from us, they left the fucking country in that area like dogs. So like you're a fucking dog, you have to leave. So that's like the whole thing is that Lebanon and the people there, like the reason why Lebanon stayed Christian so much more than any other country is that they would hide in the mountains. And when invaders were coming in to do the, you know, the, the um what's it called the 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 muslim the, crusade or yeah. whatever they were like fucking them up so like the lebanese people are very good at fucking doing insurgency wars against invaders so israelis are getting their fucking ass kicked so i think he's scared and he's launching this video specifically cuz he needs to turn the lebanese army which is mainly christian run against uh the hezeb party which is mainly Shia run and Sunni run is the other uh, Sunni Muslims are it's crazy. It's really, it's a fucking complicated situation because Sunni Muslims are the ones that are bombing him in Gaza, but Shia ones are the ones who are bombing him. It's really just Israel. Israel's the fucking problem. Okay. Sorry. I didn't mean to go on a fucking long speech, but hopefully this was in- informative. You know, let me, let me play this part. We've degraded Hezbollah's capabilities. We took out thousands of terrorists, including Nasrallah himself and Nasrallah's replacement. And he's still getting his ass And the kicked. replacement of his replacement. Today, Hezbollah is weaker 
than it's been for many, many years. Now you, the Lebanese people, Here. you stand at a significant crossroads. It is your choice. You can now take back your country. You can return it to a path of peace and prosperity. If you don't, Hezbollah will continue to try to fight Israel from densely populated areas at your expense. It doesn't care if Lebanon is dragged into a wider war. Christian, Druze, Muslims, Sunnis, and Shiites, all of you are suffering because of Hezbollah's futile war against Israel. Today I ask every mother and every father in Lebanon a simple question. Is it worth it? Because it doesn't have to be that way. Basically, is it worth it well, to fight Israel? <laughs> is it worth it? It's crazy. He's basically saying, like, if you don't take up arms against Hezbollah, we're going to do a genocide. And he said, I'm going to he said, I'm going to turn it into Gaza. They said this months ago in, in Hebrew, but most Americans weren't paying attention. <coughs> Here's my question. Do you think he's ever going to be tried as like a war criminal? Yeah, I think I personally think if this is what his strategy is and he doesn't have a strategy, I think what happened is that after October 7th, his political like his political um, standing standing was bad. Mm -hmm. So after October 7th, it was really fucking bad. So he needed to launch a war and the wars are popular. So he wanted to stay in power. And now that I, the war is really unpopular, people are protesting in Israel and getting their ass beat. So unfortunately, they're still pretty fucking that bleep thing and then bleep me saying that thing and then bleep that one as well. Uh, <laughs> that they are pretty much right winged in Israel that they don't really give a shit about killing kids. They care more about getting the hostages home. So I mean that's bullshit. They've killed their own fucking hostages. I know. So so the deal is they're protesting. So so what does Lebanon have? Lebanon has no hostages. So why the fuck are they bombing Lebanon? Because they because it's because right now he wants to drag everything in a wider regional conflict because that's the only way he's going to stay in power. And I think that he and he said this purposefully. He said forty days ago. He said it was forty days before the election. He said I'm not negotiating for forty days. He's waiting to see if fucking Trump wins because he thinks Trump will get him off the hook. That's the deal. Is that Dude, I hope I live to see the fucking day where I see him fucking like tried. Mm -hmm. 100%. I mean, look at this picture. A blessing and a curse. He goes, he shows this and says this is the blessing and the curse. He's got fucking Saudi Arabia in the blessing category. The country that like we know has a lot of human rights violations. Not saying Saudi is the worst place and the people there like I have people from Saudi that watch my streams, you know? Mm -hmm. But like Talk about human rights violations. Talk about the things that people think the Middle East looks like. There are horrible human rights violations in Saudi. And you guys are going, oh, this is the blessing. Egypt, uh, Sudan, okay, where they, there's a fucking wider regional war between the Arabs. Like, again, this is just all about who works with America and who doesn't. If you, if you don't work with America, you're the enemy and you're ready to get blown up. Can I show you the text that was sent, mass sent to Dearborn the other day? What was it? <laughs> Kamala Harris and Alyssa Slotkin's a pro-Israel team we can trust. And it was sent to everybody in Dearborn. Oh, so she's running on pro-Israel. Yeah. Kamala Harris. I mean, I'll post a picture of the text, but yeah. Go fuck yourself. No Arab is going to vote for you. And also, she's, she's losing poll points right now. You should put the picture of the text. She's losing a poll points right now because she doesn't understand. So what I heard recently was that they're trying to pay... Speaking of that, that's a really good transition. Thank you so much. You're welcome. They're trying to pay, uh, they're trying to pay, uh, like leftists to do pro Democrat stuff. And this motherfucking racist white supremacist motherfucker, too raw, too real. I hate this guy. I fucking hate him. I have something to say, but he can't be on the podcast. Okay, well, so check out the Patreon. No, there are people we know that took the bag. They took the bag. <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. So anyways, there's people that are taking the bag. Fuck whoever I know. I hate you right now, but it's fine. Take the bag. Okay. Fuck. Can you text it to me? Well, not right now. We'll talk about it later. Okay. We'll talk yeah. about it later. Just remind me. Is it Hassan? <coughs> huh? Is it Hassan? No. Oh. That'd be crazy. No, he would not take the bag. Right. Know, they literally, they literally kicked him out of the DNC. Yeah. He's fucking Hamas in chief, dude. What are you talking about? Anyways. So this individual says, dude, they reached out to me and then drops the the public database about when they're reaching out and the, the actual uh, vocal media and saying, they're like, this isn't the D DNC. I'm like, no, this is a DNC like offshoot. What the fuck are you talking about? And then this individual makes this video too. I hate this person. 
They're literally the most racist towards Palestinians and they can <laughs> fucking eat my shit. I hate you. You're a piece of shit. You are a fucking Nazi white supremacist. Are you about how awesome the Democratic Party is? I know because they've offered me nearly $15,000 to do just that, to try to take attention away from that old genocide thing. Wait, 15000 Yeah, should we, should we take the 15000 That's honestly, exactly what the person that took it got to. Honestly, yeah, you I know, might. Do you want to? Bro, we've talked so much shit on Kam Kamala that like we're we're done, dude. I love Kamala Harris. Fifteen thousand dollars. They're, they're dollars? picking what? people that were vocal about Palestine, but like, if you look at our social media accounts, I'm good. You're good. You're good. I might get this back. <laughs> <laughs> dude, Raph, dude, I might get this back. Rap is like starts buying shit on Amazon right now. He's just like, I, dude, I have $15,000. Well, I would just take the money and put it back into this, to be honest. Uh, as long as we can keep talking, you can take the bag. Yeah, I don't care. I'll take the bag. The Democratic Party ain't paying shit. And the receipts that you dropped on Twitter. because I, oh, I hate this money. motherfucker. <laughs> the Democratic Party ain't paying shit. And we know people that fuck out the fucking bag. Line. I went to your Twitter bed line because that's all you be doing is lying. We need to change your name to Carolyn and Brian because women like you is the reason why Emmett Till got killed. Okay, because oh. women like you be lying and it's detrimental to my motherfucking community. Stop lying, sis. You he's, were got a good, he's got a good lifeline. By vocal, not the Understand? He's got a lot of energy. What's a good lifeline? You know, like he's. The, I don't know if I have a good. I don't one. know. You're not gonna like him in about t minus ten seconds. Ready? Okay. Watch this. I don't. I don't have any feelings. Let me hear it. Contract by vocal, not the DNC, not the Democratic Party, not Kamala Harris's campaign, but vocal, vocal. And do you know why they said the reason why we don't want you to say Kamala Harris's name or not to explicitly endorse Kamala Harris is because they are nonpartisan, nonprofit. They cannot endorse anybody. Do you want to sit up here live about Project 2025 and say, oh, the Harris Foundation endorsed Kamala Harris? No, 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 no. A former trustee endorse Kamala Harris, not somebody who's a part of the goddamn foundation now. Because even Republicans understand that Donald Trump is a threat to a motherfucking democracy. He will be the end of this damn country. Then your ass want to sit here and spend it talking about genocide, genocide, genocide. I have Palestinians in my family. Girl, your ass ain't motherfucking damn bounded by motherfucking blood. I'm sure that they married. Can we pause this? I, I literally got shit on Twitter the other day for the same fucking thing. It's insane. So I got It's insane. Like, I've got... Like you this down because I kind of don't understand what he's saying. <laughs> I I don't I don't get what he was saying about the bullshit about the getting paid, but there are people we know that have gotten the bag. Was he saying so? That so vocal media is paying, and then essentially they, they, like this is her this is her response. So the approach that these people have been trying to take to like debunk it or something is to say, well, technically, vocal media offered to pay you, not the Democratic Party. And I just think this is such a bizarre, disingenuous position to have. Like, like vocal media is a rogue independent company out of the kindness of their heart going out and finding influencers and paying them money to give them pitches like this. Talk about how Democrats are fighting for the working people. Talk specifically about democratic policies. This is one of the pitches I received. But I especially think it's bizarre and disingenuous because these types of campaigns and their clients are public record on the Federal Election Committee website. Anyone can go on the FEC website and search any group, any individual. You can find campaign contributions and you can also find. This is really based. This needs to happen for regular content creators as That's well. That's crazy. Yeah, dude. My friends, my friend used to make fun of me for, for what I did for like my job. And then he became a public servant and I could look up how much he makes a year. And I laughed. Fuck that guy. He was a dick. But he was really, he poor to, shame. You know, look, back to the person talking about. Hold on, this, okay. They're going to respond to this. Find campaign disbursements. So this right here is a disbursement. I went on the FTC website. I searched vocal media. I searched, and here we go. The DCCC, that's the Democratic National Party, paying vocal. So the Democratic National Party gives vocal media money. Vocal media then goes and gives you money. That's basically how it works. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Back to the fucking, they're like, oh, <clears throat> I passed to family members, blah, blah, blah. I got attacked on Twitter for that this the other day. Yeah, what is it? Um, what did they say? So basically, I tweeted about how, like, my village was bombed. Mm. And everybody was so pin fucking pointed on the word village. Like, oh, your village? Like, blah, blah, blah. That's so fucking stupid. And You're I'm like. from there? Is that what they're trying to say? No, they're trying to say, that, like, that I have no ties to it. And they're basically trying to say, they're trying to whitewash me to 
prove that I'm not Arab, even though like two weeks ago they were telling me to go back to my country. They, they, uh, but they don't understand. Like, whenever you're Lebanese, you have your day ah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like where your family's from. And I'm first generation American. We all are. So I'm technically second generation American on my mom's side. I'm third on my mom's. Why do you, but, thi- why do you think I'm second on my mom's, buddy? Because of the Nakba. <laughs> the, no, I was a, I'm a refugee. She got kicked out. Did you go to the dentist? Yeah. Okay. Do I look good? They look, they look white. Thanks, man. <laughs> no, I've been thinking about it all day. Really? Yeah. You, th- you think about things. I fucking hate this guy. Can I say why? You think why? about things. Can I say why? <laughs> yeah. The fact that he's like, you don't have Palestinians in your family. Bro, okay. I don't know fucking gay people. I don't care about their rights. You know, yeah, I, I'm insane. not related to scootish. Who gives a fuck about gay people, dude? I'm going to be honest. I'm not, I'm never going to suck a dick. Why would I want them to do it publicly? I don't give a shit. I don't want scooters to be sucking dick. You know what I'm saying? Is that too far? I'm just saying, I don't care. That's a crazy argument. Yeah. You should, you should defend everyone's rights. And also if the Democrats are doing a genocide and they are in power and all you're asking them is to say not to do a genocide. If they get into power, okay, this is this is what I say this all the time. If, I, I would rather have a really shitty Republican get into power like Trump and fuck up the economy and absolutely fuck up the country so we can blame them and go, we're never going to do that again because she's going to get into office, then she's going to do right-wing policies, and then they're going to go, see, leftist policies don't work. And we're like, none of the left, there's no leftist policies. There's nothing that she's doing that I agree with. There's nothing. Nothing. I don't want a tax break Dude, for middle class. Did you say the other day she said she's going to have a Republican in her cabinet? Yes, she's keeps, she talked about it today. We're going to have a bipartisan commission. I don't want to fucking unite the country. There's no uniting with racism and middle racism. You cannot unite that. I cannot say uh, Mexican people are not real humans and we think Mexican people are humans. Well, what's the middle? Are Mexican people have humans? There's Three no... F- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the middle and it was called racist. Yeah. Know? So a fact of the matter is that like, dude, there, there is no uniting the fuck that bullshit. Fuck you. Fuck that bullshit. Fuck your white supremacist. Oh, you don't know Palestinians. It doesn't really matter for you. Shut the fuck up because people like me are also Americans and you and your fucking dumbass fucking takes Then I don't give a fuck about you and your people then dog. <laughs> like, you want me to say that? I mean, that's how people typically are. Like, I mean, fuck, I told you I had my therapist, the one I, I dropped. She was like, yeah, I don't really care about what's going on in the Middle East because I could leave my house any day and get killed because I'm a black woman. Again, that's white supremacy. You are pinning races against each other. OK, you cannot do that. That is insane. It is literally white supremacist because what? Who's the bottom race? Who becomes the bottom race? If black people are now above us, then we're the bottom race. Then who comes out under us? Is there blue people that ends up showing up? And then we go, oh, fuck those Smurfs. Yo, listen up. Oh, Smurf is like a Jewish thing, by the way. I forgot about that. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Because Smurfs, I guess the Smurfs were Jewish. Are they Jewish? What? Did, you know, Smurf <laughs> I don't is like, know if that's, I don't know if that's no, true. No, Smurf was like a Jewish race. Because the blue and white. Stuff. Huh? Because the blue and white. Is that what it is? Pretty sure. Because people would call them that and it's like fucked up. I don't know. I think it's an actual. And story. their noses and stuff. It and was, they look like goblins, you know. Oh my Dude, god! They're, they're, yeah. Somebody pulled it's up. When you did the Anne Frank, it's all <laughs> yeah, the Anne Frank thing was so funny. Raf streamed. It was uh, that's a crazy. Sentence. That was the craziest thing to say. No, but what you did was funny. Raf streamed uh, touring Anne Frank's thing in VR, and I was watching it. And Raph was like trying to fight the Nazis. I was waiting for Nazis to come and in. And he just is like, where are the Nazis? And he's like, I want to fight the Nazis. And the entire time Raph was And it was, was like, a really sad tour. It was, a, it was super fun. It was really up. educational and it was really sad. It's, it like, was, it's like this one time. It was, yeah, it was really sad, but Raph was making cry. it really fun. Like, and, and you were making, you were put, making it lighthearted. Well, I thought literally Nazis were going to start coming in and I really wanted to fight them. It's like the time I saw a clip of a Spy 600 pound life mm-hmm. episode on tiktok where she was a feeder for content i was like oh my god this is gonna be such a good episode and i made all my friends in discord watch it with me and we were silent the entire hour and i was like sitting there crying i'm like i don't want to watch this anymore it was really sad it was a really sad episode. it was a it was a fucked episode but what i was gonna say is you know mm-hmm. i got one of my tweets got pulled about me liking bigger noses and they said i was dog whistling because of the nose the I trope like, is also arab arabs have big noses it's the same trope because we're th- I know. I love me a big nose. Um, here's a here's another thing I wanted to bring up. Do you know that today that Israel is bombing the Irish troops in Lebanon, and the UN had to release a statement saying that 
Two peacekeepers were injured after the IDF tank fired its weapons towards an observer at U- uh, Unifil's headquarters. And- Bitch, I can't fucking read. Okay. I need to zoom in. In Thank the past, we've seen incursions from Israel and the Lebanon. Okay, this morning, two peacekeepers were bombed. Hold on. IDF soldiers all also opened fire at a UN position in 1-3 in uh, Lebanon, hitting the entrance of the bunker where peacekeepers were sheltering and damaging vehicles. These are Irish troops. They're UN peacekeeper troops in Lebanon. And Israel is now bombing them. And here's I mean, a Aisha Noor was a peace volunteer and they sniped her and killed her. I know. This is, these are actual military troops and they have military, like they're peacekeepers. They are actual troops. Look at them. They're, they're filming at their base. They're getting bombed at their fucking base. So is this like a war crime? Yeah, they're all, well, everything's a war crime. <coughs> you can see the rocket coming down. Wait for yeah. Did you get No. Bang. Did you ever see the Lebanese guy that hung out with these guys so much that he has an Irish accent now mm. in English? It's pretty funny. It's really funny. <laughs> yeah, they're bombing. They're bombing the Irish. And now there are Israelis talking about how they should conquer the Irish and go after the Irish. Here's another picture from an airplane of people flying over Beirut <laughs> and seeing that. Which looks like Godzilla movies. No. I wanted to show a little bit of Anthony's. Was that Andrew Garfield in one of the tabs? Yeah, did you see Andrew Garfield today, yeah, bro? That, that motherfucker's that motherfucker's banned. That's what I'm gonna say. Why? What he's never say? working again, but he fucking he's based. Are you ready? Oh, did, did my hero do something? He's great. God, I love this. Is he man. not the best Spider Man? Dude, he's the best Spider Man. He just got a bad shake with the movies, right? He best Spider Man wanted to like do act. And they wouldn't let him or something like that. It was yeah. very like controlling. And I think he just had a bad taste in his mouth. He, from it. he fucking, when he was in Far From Home or No Way Home, he killed it. It was such a good Spider-Man. Such a good Spider-Man. So here's, here's the clip Everything of him today that gold. went viral. Franchise, but I want to help you, buddy. What do you want? <laughs> what do I what want, can this Josh? 500 people collectively <laughs> clap our hands and make happen for you? Oh, man. I don't know. I'm pretty, you know what? Like, I, out of everyone in the world, I don't need, I'm so happy. Like, I, there's, we should be putting our energy towards something that actually matters. What could be you know? more important than that right <laughs> yeah. now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the lives of, I don't know, Palestinians in, in Gaza right now. <laughs> He's my Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man. 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 Our hearts and our energy and, and anyone suffering, anyone oppressed, anyone that is suffering under the, the, the weight of the, the, the horrors of our, of our world right now, anyone who doesn't have a choice in, in um, you know, living lives of, of dignity it's um yeah it's uh yeah that's where our energy should be going right now is there a wrench eyes but i want to help you buddy what do you want <laughs> big news that's my fucking spider-man dude he's gonna be on chicken and shop you know what date next oh week. is he yeah dude God, he's jewish too yeah i know he's, he's making he's, he's making such a good comeback not even a good comeback i fucking love andrew garfield dude, dude he's the best dude. he was my spider-man look at his dreamy little eyes dude dude i just want to make out with he's, him he's he's like my jake gyllenhaal him and Jake, no, him and Ryan Reynolds kissed at one of the awards. Oh, he did. Yeah, that's not that cool. No, that's wait. What? He was <laughs> what? Andrew Garfield was like on this like high trajectory, and those Spider Man movies kind of fucked him. Like, and they were so no, they didn't really fuck him. They didn't fuck him at all. They just he just didn't get the third one because of the studio. He said it. I think he said it. I'm not doing it. Really? I think so. Yeah. It was. He's the like when I'm he was in, sure. when he was. Let's in, get him on the podcast. We'll ask him, dude. Andrew Garfield, I love you on the podcast, dude. He was the best. Like on No Way Home, he made he made that movie so fucking funny. Like he was so good in that movie. Yeah, he made me realize, like, dude, this is the Spider Man that he should have been. Like, this is what they probably gave him more creative freedom. That's probably why. Probably. Um. Okay. Or money. Uh, I don't know how long we've been going. You wanna uh? What else do we have? To, what I wanted, else to, to, I wanted to show. Just just keep going. I wanted to show uh, um. Uh, do not worry podcast has shouted us out probably 8,000 times and we shot them out 8,000 times. We had Anthony on go watch that episode. Um, but I wanted to see how they were doing. So I, I watched their podcast every week and, uh, dude, it was really nice to, uh, uh, have Anthony on. And then, uh, Kyle Kalinske picked up the clip that I put of Anthony on and he was super excited. Who's Kyle Kalinske. He's a leftist. He's been doing it for like 12 years. I've been watching him longer than any other like left political commentator. Okay. So, uh, he's a YouTuber. Okay, so, but anyways, uh, this is them talking about 
living through it and that you could just tell they're like dealing with it you know so i want to play some of this stuff lebanese people don't even want so this is a if you don't know this is a lebanese podcast they're in lebanon they're trying to power through they do stuff like we do but they're just trying to power through and and you know because the problem is i feel like i'm kind of burnt out i'm not gonna lie to you guys it's only been three weeks of war and now i have it easy i live in a safe area relatively only been three weeks of war is not been easy to say but after a year of like watching the genocide in gaza and again nothing being done to stop it i felt kind of like it really brought me down and i felt a little bit like not burnt out but like overloaded with with uh, with just war images and and babies just de decapitated and, and, and killed so now that it's happening here in lebanon i wonder if i even still have it in me to like fight but like we have to we have no choice but i mean it's... that's totally fair because again we've been speaking for a year about what's happening in palestine i love her i know now that it's love happening Noor. to us here you feel like as much as you're speaking and we've been speaking for a year and nothing happened yeah. so now it just feels like i know is this useful at all are we doing something that no, no, is exactly. anyone listening yeah it, it feels kind of useful, and everyone's leaving like it feels useless everyone's leaving really nice comments and we're again a lot of viewers from yeah. uh, from abroad coming here from from hassan or, or, or kyle kalinsky or the arabs pod but like again it's like <laughs> it's like, us i don't know and like how long Dude, we're watching them talk about us all the, you know how long are we supposed to do this like are we gonna it come took on a here? year in order to get like this very minimal recognition so you know a day it will take in order to get like a bigger one and we have to explain the dynamics of hezbollah and like no they're not terrorists like everyone's already made up their mind yeah. abroad so this part is like really how every arab has been feeling and this is like the best part like every <laughs> lebanese right now and like i think i think Nord just really kills it real real quick oh, like, i don't feel have like to prove to people and please we are human we live just like you do we're like we party and we go out and we'll fuck off that's we don't have to say that to prove to you that and we'll exactly. don't bomb us and this show's supposed to be a light fun show like we're not this isn't a news show we don't react to like war and stuff so i don't know how long we can keep it's it's crazy like basically they're just like it's the same thing we've been thinking you don't have to prove you're human and not get fucking bombed you know yeah so it's just bad, dude. It's so bad. It's it's fucked. It's bad. It's not good. Uh, you know, and that's uh, that's the that's, that's updates on Lebanon. That's updates on Lebanon. Uh, I think we're right, let we me got let a couple me, more things to talk about. Well, we'll we shift may gears. we may we may shift gears and do it on the Patreon. Uh, Fro, what are we at? Hour fifteen. We can do. We can end. We can end it with with one one more thing. Then. Uh yeah, we can talk about um. KSI's music video. Did you watch it? I didn't watch the music video, and I'm I want to watch it with you guys. Maybe we'll watch it on the Patreon. Should we do that? Yeah, we'll watch that on the Patreon. You know what I was gonna do today? What? What? I was gonna try to find this lunch lease. Oh, you were? Oh, and go buy. I think they're at Walmart. They're sold out. Oh, really? Everywhere. I don't want to try that, dude. Oh. I have I have Lunchables in my veins, dog. Okay, I don't need Lunchly to come out. Lunchables are my favorite depression meal when exactly. I moved to LA. Dude, Lunchables are the shit. When I first moved to LA, I was super sad, and all I would eat were either wheat thins and Monterey Jack cheese or turkey Lunchables. Somebody was trying to start shit with me the other day. Not actual shit. I forgot who it was. I said, "Dude, why would I want Lunchlies when Lunchables are go go goaded and I have those and they're the best?" Somebody was like, "They're not the best." I forgot who it was. I don't have a problem with you because I think you're a friend of mine. But I was like, I don't what? And the people, pizza lunchables are the fucking shit, okay? Have you bought a lunchable in the past ten years? I did. Yeah. Past ten? Yeah, dude. Five. Yeah. Yeah. I bought one. Five. I literally used to eat them like recently. What the fuck is wrong? I'm Twenty-nine, with five years ago, it's twenty-four. Yeah. College. I had I had a bunch of Have college. you been eating them since you've been on your like skinny girl era? Yeah. What do you think jump started it? The skinny well, girl era? I'm sorry. You started dieting with Lunchables? I was so depressed I couldn't eat, and all I could eat were Lunchables or cheese and crackers. And, so, and I took a page out of her book, and I like, spent a whole day eating uh, Triscuits and Pepper Jack cheese, and I ate the entire box and bag of it, and I've never forgiven her for that, for what it did to me. It was bad. How do you think I lost so much weight? You know, I lost five pounds this week. Oh, congratulations. I was going to say you. you look skinnier. You look great. What about me? Thank you. Ah, I'm 11 like pounds away no, from where, where my doctor wants me to be. That's good. That's pretty good. That's good. It's good stuff. I'm skinny. 
I Are we gonna? I also stole Scooch's socks. Yeah, dude. He bought these Dumbo socks, and he Both left them in my house, house for a it's year. It's fitting. You kind of look like Dumbo. Damn, dude. Damn, bro. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. Every time we get to the reason why the <laughs> fucking damn. the reason why the fucking podcast only lasts an hour is we get to an hour. Frogan starts tuning out and falling asleep, and then just starts hurling insults at me. I'm sorry, I get hungry. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. An hour in, Frogan's like. And then literally, and then she's really like, "You're fucking ugly, Capri." And I'm like, "Yo, what the fuck?" Okay, I've been guiding the content. I've been driving the shit. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm in pain right now. My shoulders hurt. My stomach hurts. Oh, Tell dude. everyone why your stomach hurts. <laughs> no, no, you know why. Let's you be know, honest. You, you know, know why. You know I'm why. in pain. Okay, here's the deal. You know what it's like carrying the weight of this podcast on my shoulders? <laughs> <laughs> the success of this podcast are on, is it's on my honestly, shoulders. It's all on her shoulders, but Capri and I handle the big boy, the big boy meetings. Do we? We handled the last one. I was there. What do you want me to no, say? No, you handled it. You did a good yeah, job. I just, I'm I sorry. Not, I don't remember any of it. No, you did, you did I'm sorry. I just job. sat there. You guys talked. I was like, okay, I don't have to no, say you shit. Did, you, did, you did a good job. I really didn't know what was going on. I was just trying to like process my brain. Okay, here's the thing. I want to hear three things for the end of the pod, okay? before Because we're going to talk about KSI. We're going to watch it on the Patreon. Oh, I want guys. to interview you for acting class. I should do that on the Patreon too. Okay. Are you going to actually interview me for acting class? Yeah, I have the, I have the notebook here with questions. Interviewing oh, him, but not me? I have to play him as a character. Oh. So I'm gonna in, I'm gonna I'm gonna interview him and then I have to literally be oh. Capri for a day. <laughs> they were like, pick somebody close to you. I'm like, okay. And then I was thinking, okay, well, somebody close to me would be Frogan, but she's a woman and I'm a man. So it has to be somebody like I can actually be. Okay. And I was like, oh, Capri is my close second. You can never be me. Buddy. But we're I, gonna see we're gonna see. Dude, we can drink tonight. On the it's Patreon. Friday. Who's we? Me. You can get so drunk. <laughs> I'm not getting drunk tonight. I'm doing it. I need it. We need soup is what we need. Yeah, we no, need. you need soup. I need, I, need a, I need a hug on the inside of my body. Okay. It's Call all your weird. Okay, here's the deal. <laughs> no, they finger you. I don't want to be fingered. I just want to be hugged. That is a hug. Are those the three things you wanted us to talk about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted... No. I wanted three things, like th cool things. Get you fingered. Been, what have you been doing? What's cool that you did this week? Tell me three little things. Little things. I survived. <laughs> okay. What's What else? Did you watch any TV while you're si sick? I watched 12 seasons of Evil Lives in This House. That sounds great. And it how was, was really it? depressing. Was it good? No. Okay. Did, I, you, did you watch Joker? I did watch Joker actually. Did you hate the second it? one? Yeah. No, dude. I thought it was I thought it was silly, but I thought everybody was making this huge stink about it. It was fine. It's all right. It was fine. You know, it's a sequel to a great movie. What it do was you a expect? cash grab. It was a cash grab. Let's be it honest. definitely was a cash grab. And I think um I was just it was it was it was fine. It yeah. was just silly. Yeah. But like, what do you expect, dude? He's literally mentally insane. There was parts of it. I'm like, what? This doesn't make any sense. Well, no, no spoilers because I haven't seen it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spoil it. It's worth watching. What about you? Did you do anything fun this week? And I know you're gonna say no, but you hang. You hung out with me, so if you say no, it's fucking yeah, insulting. It's kind of me. fucked up if you say no. Because I got three. I got six piggy banks, and we're gonna go there and get another one tonight. Mega Man. I'm very excited for next week. Bes the when we're young fest. Yeah. That was my mental health crisis purchase. When are you, when are you leaving for that? Friday. Friday night mm -hmm. for Saturday, Sunday concert. Yeah. Sick. We have a house. Oh, nice. That's going to be good. Me, Alec, Alex. I like that you just, you just government named it. Emma and Courtney. Oh, that's going to be an amazing yeah, house. We, we didn't have a book thing yet, but that's the group we're planning so that's far. That's a great that's And then house. my friends were like, everybody I know. So basically, this is my high school reunion. Yeah. I started on emo Twitter in 2012. Every motherfucker I know on Twitter is going to be there. My friends from Baltimore I haven't seen in three years are going to be there, and I'm so excited to see them. This is going to be a good trip um, for you. It's going to cure me. The only thing I'm very sad about... Hold on. I, I, so the set times leaked, and I was really sad because the All-American Rejects in 303 overlapped, but I guess I don't have to worry about that considering the All-American Rejects dropped out. Um. So my list I have highlighted. I'm sorry. This is, am I going too long? Yeah, Patreon. I'll tell you who I'm going to see. Who's on my list of must sees on the Patreon? The reason why is I'm also zoning out. 
but yeah um <laughs> other than that i did nothing this week i started i walked I, i've been going for walks lately really yeah yeah that was really good cool that's healthy too. yeah dude I scooters put, all, I, scooters doing are five you, miles too are you where, you where are you walking to just around the hood mm-hmm. Put my ear, my AirPods in. That's good. That's a good thing. I've just been walking. I mean, the area we live in, you should be walking around, yeah. to be honest. All right. And what about you? My set. I uh, set. I, I oh, been, for your. Did I, you see it? I watched. I saw. I saw your video. No, that was even before it's done. Oh no! Oh, he just showed me. Oh yeah, yeah done. That's sick, dude. I watched Beetlejuice. I thought it was whatever. I honestly have been out of the house every single day doing some shit. It's felt really good, dude. I feel good about myself right now, and I'm fucking just kind of on a. I'm on a really good tear with streaming. I really am happy with it. I'm happy mm-hmm. I'm doing what I want to do. And it's really making me like fulfilled. Like I'm on a good routine. I think that's like the best thing for me is like get up, cook, like uh, cook something quick. Like today I, I got up at seven o'clock and usually I like fuck around like and kind of drag my ass until nine. And I was like, I'm just going to shower, drink coffee and like go live. And it was like fucking nice, dude. Like I just feel I feel good. Like I built Legos. I bought, I went and spent money and I never really spend money on stupid shit. Like I never buy stuff for me. I bought those little statues for me. So it was nice to like buy things. Like I never buy stuff that I don't inherently need because I always feel like I'm being frivolous. But it was really, it was like, it felt good. Like buying clothes, like I feel good buying clothes. I feel good about myself. It was nice, man. So I had a good time, but yeah. Good. Uh, We're going to talk about uh, KSI's music video. You're going to interview me on the Patreon. Yeah. Also, guys, this show is only supported by viewers like you. Um, I just want to thank all the patrons. Next week, we're going to start reading the patrons' names at some point during the episode. Uh, And then, so if you guys subscribe this week, you may be read next week. We're just going to pick a few patrons, and we're going to be like, hey, shout out this person in the middle of the episode. So the other thing is that uh, if you made it to the end, uh, put a little Lebanese flag and a little heart. That'd be nice. Um, But if you want to say other things too with that, we love the messages, the really nice messages. If if you leave us a nice message, it's awesome because we get a lot of fucking hate comments. So it's nice to get nice messages. Yeah. And if you leave us a hate comment, that's cool too. Yeah. I don't really read them. So we need the hate comments. We need the hate comments. We need you guys. I read them all. We're going to read some all. That's not true. I I read Just kidding. I don't read the comments. So whenever Capri pretends to be me, not me. All right, guys, we'll see Uh, you on the Patreon. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Dude, I don't know. The Cure's my favorite band of all time. You just went, ugh. My Chemical Romance (laughs) is a ripoff of The Cure and his bitch ass fucking goth look that he stole. I can't wait to see. You love Beetlejuice and it's based on the fucking look of The Cure, motherfucker. I can't wait to see. Listen, I'm so ready to drop my ass during 303. I cannot wait. I've never seen you drop your ass. Let me see it.